Hello everyone, I am Prakash Tungapi serving as assistant professor in the department of electronics and communication engineering, RNS institute of technology. I will be handling the network analysis course which uh, has got the uh, subject code as 15 EC 34 and uh, uh, these are my colleagues who will also be uh, sharing the uh, this course network analysis course professor H S Mohana, professor B Sudha, professor M T Sunil, professor Praveen Chetty. So, they will be uh, appearing here to uh, tell you about this course uh, regarding the module 2 and 3, 4 and 5. I will be basically handling the module 1 of uh, this particular course which basically deals with the basic circuit concepts. And, uh, uh, this is whatever you are seeing is the uh, syllabus and uh, in the module 1 as I already told you we go through the basic circuit concepts most of them which you have already uh, come across in your basic courses. And in the module 2 we come across the network theorems basically the statement and the proof we go through and uh, the network theorem conclusions basically they lead to the reduction of steps in obtaining the solution to a problem that is why we take up this particular uh, uh, network theorems chapter. Then module 3 uh, basically uh, discusses about the initial conditions uh, that is uh, we are interested in obtaining the responses of the network as soon as the switching action takes place in the network. So, uh, that will have their own applications in determining the total uh, response ok that is why we study the initial conditions and also we come across the Laplace transforms. So, using which we will be obtaining the solution of networks basically the equation of the responses we will be getting using the Laplace transform. And then in the module 4 we study about the resonant circuits which are basically the frequency selective circuits. We mainly go through the uh, expression of the resonant frequency and the performance parameters like the quality factor and the bandwidth. In the next module we go through the two port networks we will be basically given a two port network and we will be uh, obtaining the network parameters associated with them. Those are referred as the two port network parameters. So, I will be mainly uh, yeah before that the textbooks these two are the uh, prescribed textbooks Van Valkenburg and Rai Choudhury. Rai Choudhury you can uh, refer to that for uh, 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 the concepts given in module 1. 2 and 4. Van Valkenburg you can refer to that for the module 3 and module 5. And these are the reference books Haight Kemmerle, David Irwin, Charles K. Alexander you can refer to these books for the problems. For the concepts we will be mainly using these two books. Next straight away we will come to the module 1 which basically deals with the basic circuit concepts. First of all let us make sure what is actually a network. Any interconnection of network or circuit elements can be regarded as a network and uh, the network or circuit elements are nothing but the resistance, inductance, capacitance, voltage and current sources. And let me tell you throughout this course we will be only dealing with these five components whatever they are listed here and network or circuit elements are nothing but through which the electric current can flow. Then the circuit what is a circuit? Interconnection of network or circuit elements again, but in such a way that a closed path is formed and an electric current flows in it. So, you can say that all circuits can be easily regarded as what? Networks, ok. But all networks you can you cannot say that it is a circuit for the simple reason for the circuit to be for any network to be called as a circuit. So, there should be what a closed uh, path formed and an electric current should flow in it. So, you can say that all circuits can be regarded as networks, but all networks cannot be referred as circuits. Then coming to the active circuit elements. So, these are the circuit elements which actually deliver the energy to the network. So, which are basically voltage and current sources. Passive circuit elements, they are those circuit elements which absorb the energy from the network. So, mainly R, L and C. As already told throughout this course we will be only dealing with these five components voltage source, current source R, L and C. Then what are active elements? What are active elements or the 
uh, those elements which actually energize the network. So, in that first we come across the ideal voltage source. What is an ideal voltage source? You can observe here, it is that energy source whose terminal voltage remains constant regardless of the value of the terminal current that flows. Now, you can observe this, this is the representation of an ideal voltage source, this is the representation of an ideal voltage source and these two are the terminals A and B between which you actually connect the load and the load can be what? The any circuit or a discrete value of resistance which can be connected and what this ideal voltage source does? It will maintain the terminal voltage constant regardless of the variation in the load because with the variation in the load, the current drawn will vary, but irrespective of the current drawn or the terminal current variation, the potential that mean that is maintained uh, between uh, these two terminals say v, v here remains constant. And uh, this is of course, the V i characteristics of the ideal voltage source. We can observe here with the increase in the terminal current or you can also regard it as load current, the voltage, the terminal voltage or the voltage that is applied to the load remains constant. So, this is about the ideal voltage source. Now, coming to the practical voltage source. So, how do we define a practical voltage source? It is that energy source whose terminal voltage decreases, whose terminal voltage decreases with the increase in the current that flows through it, with the increase in the current that flows through it. The practical voltage source is represented by an ideal voltage source and a series resistance called internal resistance. See, after all, uh, any voltage source is a circuit basically and it will have its own, uh, you know, inherent resistance that is uh, the internal resistance and by virtue of that, there is a deviation in the uh, characteristics of the practical voltage source from the ideal one. It is because of the internal resistance which the practical voltage source possess and uh, this particular characteristics of the practical voltage source that is the uh, terminal voltage reduction with the increase in the terminal current is uh, uh, can be uh, justified by considering the internal resistance to be in series with an ideal voltage source. Now, these two together make up the practical voltage source okay? and what we are observing this is the representation of the practical voltage source. It is nothing but an ideal voltage source in series with the internal resistance and these two become the terminals of the practical voltage source and V 1 is the terminal voltage which is actually supplied to the load and I 1 is the current that is actually supplied to the load and what we are observing this is the V i characteristics of the practical voltage source and what we are observing with the increase in the terminal current that is this current you observe you observe the terminal voltage to reduce to reduce and this is the ideal characteristics marked here. Of course, the deviation is minimum in that way we would have designed the practical uh, voltage source, but still what we can say is with the increase in terminal current the terminal voltage reduced or the voltage that is actually supplied to the load will reduce and this is the governing equation. So, V 1 is equal to V minus I 1 R. So, what we are observing V 1 is the voltage between the terminals it is equal to the voltage that is generated here. So, minus the drop here, okay, the left out will be passed to the load. So, V is the generated voltage minus the drop. So, V minus I 1 R should be the value of V 1 or the terminal voltage that is actually supplied to the load. So, that is why we see what here V 1 is equal to V minus I 1 R and from this also we can justify the characteristics that with the increase in the terminal current that is the I 1 whatever that is supplied to the load that is the terminal voltage V 1 reduces. Okay. Now, coming to the ideal current source, coming to the ideal current source, it is that energy source whose terminal current remains constant regardless of the value of the terminal voltage. Now, the main job of the current source is to supply the constant current to the load and with the load variation here in this case of current source, the terminal voltage will vary, the terminal voltage will vary with the variation in the load and as a result, we expect what the current to vary, but in the case of in the case of ideal current source, the current whatever that is supplied to the load will remain constant regardless of the value of the load or regardless of the value of the terminal voltage. That is what is shown here with the increase in terminal voltage, the value of the current is just fixed here, is just fixed here that is the nature of the ideal current source. So, 
just like how we have the practical voltage source, because we know that uh, after all even this is a circuit, even this is a circuit and circuit every circuit will inherently possess its own uh, resistance, which we regard it as the internal resistance. So, even the practical current source will have the internal resistance and to justify the uh, practical current source characteristics, we use that internal resistance. So, let us see what is actually a practical current source. So, a practical current source is that energy source whose terminal current decreases, whose terminal current decreases that is what is whatever that is supplied to the load decreases with the increase in terminal voltage, with the increase in terminal voltage. That is, if this is increased whatever that is supplied to the load will actually reduce and this particular characteristics is justified by representing the practical current source which is actually what the ideal current source uh, which has got a parallel internal resistance like this. And what we observe here is with the increase in V 1 and you know V 1 is also across what the R. So, voltage drop across R increases as a result the current drawn by R increases. So, whatever that is supplied to the load is actually whatever that is supplied by this ideal current source will go towards the internal resistance and towards the load. And if the current drawn by the internal resistance increase, so whatever that is supplied to the load has to reduce, because this is an ideal current source which actually supplies the constant current. So, this ideal current source and the internal resistance parallel combination together make up for what the practical current source. And what we see here is with the increase in terminal voltage, the terminal current that is actually supplied to the load will reduce, will reduce and what we observe is the characteristics here. We can observe this is the ideal characteristics and you can observe with the increase in terminal voltage, the current value is folding back, is folding back. You know for the increase in V 1, the corresponding I 1 will be greatly, will be rather reducing. Of course, the deviation is less in that way we would have designed the practical current source, but still we can definitely say that it is not an ideal source, is, the, is not an ideal source. And now, this is the equation which actually governs the practical uh, current source, I 1 is the uh, terminal current or the current what is actually supplied to the load, I 1 is equal to I minus V 1 by R. So, you can observe here the I whatever that is actually supplied has to be what equal to this current plus this current. Okay, and this current is given by V 1 by R, this current is given by v I minus I 1 rather, I minus I 1 is also what V 1 by R by the Ohm's law. Now, we can say what I 1 is equal to I minus this current and this current is actually V 1 by R. So, that is what we are observing here, I 1 is equal to I minus V 1 by R. Right. So, this is the uh, characteristics of the practical current source. Now, whatever we have seen earlier that is just now, okay, they are the independent sources. That means, their value does not depend upon any other current or voltage. Now, whatever we are going to see now, okay, they are the dependent or controlled sources. Now, you have what dependent voltage source, dependent current source okay, in under this class. Let us see how it is actually defined as. These are the sources whose voltage whose voltage, this is in the case of dependent voltage source. These are the sources whose voltage depends on voltage or current that appears at some other location of the network. So, this uh, is actually the definition of a dependent voltage source. Now, if I want to define uh, the dependent current source, how I have to uh, define? Dependent current source depends on current, whose current depends on the voltage or current that appears at some other location of the network. So, with this we may now think of what uh, four types of dependent sources, what are what they are? Voltage controlled voltage source that is this is a dependent voltage source whose voltage is controlled by voltage appearing at some other location in the network. And next is voltage controlled current source. Now, this is a current source whose current value is dependent upon the voltage that appears at some other location in the network. Now, there is a third case which is referred as the current controlled voltage source. So, CCVS. So, this is a voltage source whose voltage value is controlled by current that appears at some other location in the network. Similarly, we have what CCCS current controlled current source. This is the current source whose value of current uh, depends upon the 
uh, current that appears at some other location in the network. So, now whatever that follows, these are the representations, these are the representations of the dependent sources, voltage control voltage source, you can observe this V, the voltage that is uh, appearing across the terminals of this is actually equal to k times V c, where k is the proportionality constant. Okay, and the VCCS. Now, the this is the voltage control current source. The value of I is actually dependent upon the VC control voltage, which appears at some other location in the network. And CCVS, current controlled voltage source. Current controlled voltage source. And this is the representation of the current controlled current source. You can observe the current source will have what arrowhead in the rhombus. The uh, voltage source will have positive and negative polarity and same is the case even in the independent sources which we have seen prior. Now, let us make sure of the uh, KVL and KCL statements. Of course, you have come across this in your basic courses. Now, let us all uh, follow a uh, convention while applying the KVL and KCL. Okay. So, Kirchhoff's voltage law what it states basically. It states that the algebraic sum of branch voltages around any closed path of the network is equal to 0 at all instants of time. This is based on the law of conservation of energy. So, this simply means that okay, this K V L needs to be considered for a closed path of the network. And what it says in the closed path of the network, whatever the voltages you come across, their algebraic sum turns out to be 0, turns out to be 0. It is based on the fact of law of conservation of energy. So, let us uh, consider a simple circuit, which has got what a single closed path like this. Now, this is the generator voltage, we call it as one V g. So, let me tell you what is actually V g here. It actually represents the potential difference between this point and this point. Supposing if V g is 5 volts, it actually means as compared to this point this point is higher in potential by 5 volts. Okay. Now, what these actually represents V 1, V 2, V 3. Okay. You can observe these are the voltages which appear across the passive circuit elements like this resistance, this resistance or in this resistance. And what they represent actually, they represent the energy drop or the potential drop that takes place across these passive circuit elements. Now, how do we uh, you know, uh, how do we get these plus and minus polarities of the potential drop? It is very simple. What we have to remember is, as when you know, whenever there is a current flow, like in this case, always you know, the entry point of the current will have what? Uh, will have the positive polarity of the potential drop that takes place across the passive circuit element. Please remember, this is in the case of passive circuit element. Now, here also how this plus minus polarity of this voltage drop or the potential drop or the energy drop which you are observing, it is it is nothing but what it is because of what you know the current whatever the flows it is going in this direction. So, the entry point is this. So, you can observe the positive polarity of the potential drop that takes place across this passive circuit element. And how we can justify this? This can be justified in a very simple way, in a very simple way. Now, you know this is the uh, voltage and let us uh, consider two resistances say R 1 and say R 2. And there is a single uh, voltage source obviously, what we can think the current has to come out of the uh, positive potential point and then end up at uh, negative polarity. It has to start from the positive polarity or higher potential point to the lower potential point. We know uh, all this. Then I is the current which flows in this way. And since this is a parallel combination, we can say that the same voltage drop appears across what the resistances of R 1 and R 2. And this current actually, you know, uh, splits into two points, there is two parts, right, like I 1 and I 2. Actually, I is equal to I 1 plus I 2. And what we are observing? We are observing that, you know, uh, these polarities have been obtained based on the concept of parallel combination. As we say that the uh, voltage drop, drop across the uh, parallel combination is uh, it's same or equal, right. So, we have determined these uh, positive and uh, negative polarities based on the uh, concept whatever we have seen in the case of parallel combination. 
And now what you are observing the currents okay, which uh, you know the components of this I you are observing they are entering the passive circuit elements of R1 and R2. So, what you can now uh, uh, make out of this we can dare say that in the case of passive circuit elements not only in the case of resistances in the case of you know inductance okay, or uh, a, a capacitance we can dare say that whenever the current enters any passive circuit element and if that passive circuit element has got a potential drop its positive polarity will always coincide with the entry point of the current that flows through it this is what we have to always remember okay and based on that based on that we have identified the we have identified the polarities of the potential drops here now you can observe the current i is actually flowing from higher potential point to the lower potential point so you can always observe what the entry point to have what um, the positive polarity of the potential drop. Now, uh, this is the energy supplier okay, to this particular network and these are the energy consumers. So, from this you know we can easily say that V g should be obviously equal to V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3. Anyway, we will apply the uh, K V L to this closed path and uh, uh, reassure that V g in fact is equal to V 1 plus uh, v 2 plus v 3. Let us see. Now, uh, we are considering the clockwise application of the K V L. Let us start from here and we follow a convention. Now, that we have already identified the uh, drops across the uh, elements in this particular path. So, we start from here. So, we when we uh, move in this direction in the clockwise direction you first encounter what the positive polarity. So, why we follow a convention that this voltage is to be assigned with the positive sign plus V 1 plus V 1. You can also do it the other way that is since this is a potential drop you can consider it to be what negative, but even this is correct and it will avoid lot of negative signs. So, that is why uh, we follow this particular method. Okay. Let us all follow this convention. So, we are moving this direction you are encountering the positive sign first. So, plus V 1. So, that is what applying K V L clockwise plus V 1, next we are coming here plus V 2, next we are coming here plus V 3, next you are encountering the negative polarity of the voltage source. So, minus V g. So, then what it says the algebraic sum of branch voltages around any closed path of the network is equal to 0. So, this is assigned to 0. Now, you know uh, this equation can be modified to this form. So, V g is equal to V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 and which is in the indicative of the fact that energy delivered is equal to energy absorbed. And uh, you know the basic uh, you know unit of the voltage is not volt it is actually joules per coulomb it is actually joules per coulomb. So, this means if there is a 5 volt potential drop it means that it means that to carry a to carry a unit charge from this end of the passive circuit element to this end of the passive circuit element there is energy which is consumed which is equal to 5 joules. Supposing there is a 5 volts you can view it as what 5 joules of energy is consumed in carrying a unit charge from this end of the passive circuit element to this end of the passive circuit element. So, voltage is something which is associated with the energy okay, right, which actually reflects the energy. So, that is why we say V g is equal to V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 this is the indicative of the fact that the energy delivered is equal to energy absorbed. Okay. Now, uh, KCL Kirchhoff's current law the algebraic sum of branch currents that leave a node of a network is equal to 0 at all instants of time. And yeah let me tell you about uh, the uh, KVL uh, seeing a, a statement. Now, what is this algebraic sum? Okay. Had this been an ordinary sum you could have just added all and said that it is equal to 0. Algebraic sum means you have to take care of the directions or the signs S i g n s. Okay. So, that is why we could write like V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 minus V g. Had this been an ordinary sum you could have just written it as what V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 plus V g is equal to 0, but it is not so. It is the algebraic sum. So, that means the signs of the potential drops are very important that has to be taken care. Right. Next, Kirchhoff's current law, yeah, as already told, the algebraic sum of branch currents that leave a node. So, we only bother about the currents that leave a node of a network, okay. That leave a node of a network is equal to 0 at all instants of time. This is based on the law of conservation of charge. So, what we have to know is 
whenever you know the charge enters a node, node is not the storage point you know. So, that charge has to come out of the node and the flow of charges is actually attributed by the current flow. So, what you can say whatever the current that enters the node has to leave the node, it is based on that fact. So, now let us apply the KCL to this particular node. So, this also means that the KCL needs to be applied at a node. Now, this is a node, node is basically that point where two or more circuit elements basically join. So, now this is that point node. So, we need to apply KCL at this node. Let us see uh, what happens. Apply KCL at node x. So, let us follow this statement strictly. The algebraic sum of branch currents that leave a node of a network is equal to 0. So, now we are only bothered about the leaving currents. So, let us consider this particular branch current, it is leaving. So, plus I 1. Now, I 2, it is leaving. So, plus I 2. Then, I coming to I 3. I 3 is the current which is actually entering the node, which is actually entering the node, but as per the statement, we only concentrate on the leaving currents. So, what you have to remember is, if a 5 ampere current moves towards right, it also means that minus 5 amperes move towards the left. This is what we have to remember always. So, I 3 if it moves in this direction or enters the node, it also means that the leaving current is minus I 3. So, plus I 1 plus I 2 minus I 3. And what about in this case? So, minus I 4 because this is also the entering current, but we want the leaving current okay, minus I 4, then plus I 5 is equal to 0. And throughout our course, we will be writing the KCL uh, equation in this way only. We only concentrate on the leaving currents. We only concentrate on the leaving currents and we consider the algebraic sum of them and they ultimately turns out, turn out to be 0. Now, we, we can modify this equation and it will look like something like this I 3 plus I 4 is equal to I 1 plus I 2 plus I 5 and this is what you have uh, seen in your basic courses. What is that? This is the indicative of what sum of incoming currents. So, I 3 plus I 4 is equal to sum of outgoing currents at a node. So, that is I 1 plus I 2 plus I 5. So, you can observe I 1 plus I 2 plus I 5, they are the leaving currents, I 3 and I 4, they are the entering currents. So, or the sum of the incoming currents is equal to sum of the outgoing currents. But throughout our course, we will be writing the KCL equation in this way only, in this way only, because uh, this makes the things simple. Next, source transformation. Yeah, once again, uh, regarding the algebraic sum. Had this been an ordinary sum, you could have just written it as what I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3 plus I 4 plus I 5 is equal to 0, but please remember it is the algebraic sum that means you have to be very careful about the directions, about the directions or signs S i g n s. Okay? So, uh, yeah, that is why we say it is the algebraic sum of the branch currents that leave a node of a network is equal to 0 at all instants of time. Okay? Uh, next coming to the source transformation. So, coming to the source transformation and basically the source transformation uh, refers to the representation of a voltage source by the equivalent current source or we can say a voltage source can be equivalently transformed to a current source. Now, the vice versa is also true. Okay? So, that means, we can uh, easily transform the current source to its equivalent voltage source. And why we do this? Mainly this is done in the reduction of the complicated network to the simplest form or uh, it will also help in uh, analyzing the network to obtain the solution or in the direction of obtaining the solution. So, uh, let us see what is a source transformation now. Now, let us consider a voltage source. So, this is the voltage source. Okay. So, V and please remember for the source transformation to happen, we expect the voltage source to you know uh, have the series resistance or we can also regard it as the internal resistance okay. Okay, to be uh, you know something like this. Now, this is the voltage source V with a series resistance and then these two are the terminals of this particular arrangement. Now, you know obviously, when this current, when this voltage source provides the load current, it will be I 1 and the voltage drop definitely will not be equal to V, because there will be some drop across the internal resistance or the series resistance. So, we can write it is V 1 okay. and let us consider the current source. 
wherein you know there is an ideal current source I and then it will have the internal resistance or the parallel resistance of the same value say R and these two are the terminals A and B. And let us you know uh, regard the terminal voltage here to be V1 and the terminal current that is actually supplied to the load to be I1 something like this. Now, the governing equation here as already seen V1 will be equal to what this potential minus the potential drop here. So, V minus I1 R we can write like this and call this as equation 1 and the governing equation here I can write whatever that uh, goes to the load is I1 is actually I can write it as what I can write it as I minus the same drop appears here. So, V1 so I minus V1 by R and when we solve this you know for the terminal voltage. So, we can regard it as what V 1 is equal to V 1 is equal to then what we will write. So, it is I r minus I 1 r I r minus I 1 r. Now, call this as equation 2 call this as equation 2. So, this r comes here and then this r multiplies here then if you solve for V 1 V 1 comes here then it is I r minus I 1 r. Now, what we are observing here is this is the terminal voltage okay, associated with this voltage source. This is the terminal voltage associated with this current source and uh, this is the terminal current uh, related to this voltage source and this is the terminal current associated with this current source. And if these two sources are to be the equivalent sources, so if the sources are to be equivalent then what is the necessary condition V 1 and I 1 or in both the cases they have to be same this implies what ok V 1 I 1 in both cases in both cases have to be same or equal ok the corresponding V 1 I 1 have to be uh, equal. So, this implies equation 1 should be equal to equation 2 because they ultimately refer to what the terminal voltage. This also implies what that this V should be equal to what I R or this I should be equal to V by R V by R call this as equation 3 and now what we can say what we can say if equation 3 is satisfied that is if this V is equal to I R or if this I is equal to V by R then you can say that this is equivalently representing this or this is equivalently representing this current source. Uh, okay. So, then what you can say between the terminals whatever may be the connect uh, whatever may be the circuit which gets connected it they will have what same voltage supplied and same current supplied in both the cases if these are what equivalent sources or if this is the equivalent of this or if this is the equivalent of this then V 1 I 1 whatever that is supplied to the same load which is connected between these two ok. So, will remain same uh, is that clear ok. Now, uh, you know that is what uh, here we are uh, uh, mentioning this means uh, ok. So, V is equal to I r or I is equal to V by R and if equation 9 holds good then voltage source above can be equivalently transformed to or represented by the current source shown above and vice versa. Okay. Now, uh, you know let us uh, take up a, a problem let us take up a problem related to the source transformation. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we will you know uh, make sure once again ok. So, if there is a voltage source V and then this is R and if this is the terminals A and B and the equivalent equivalent current source will be having what the value of I which is equal to what V by R and uh, a parallel resistance R okay. Now, 
this is the source transformation. Now, this V is transformed to I, but this I current source value has to be equal to V by R and of course, this resistance comes in parallel with that current source. Then we can dare say that the terminal voltage and the current in both the cases, in both the cases they are same, they are same. So, you can say you can put this sign. Now, what we will do is this you know A and B can be uh, taken out like this, even this can be the representation equivalent you know if this is the voltage source. So, V and then of course, uh, this is the equivalent of this V has to be equal to what I R. So, V is I R and this can also be what the point A and the point B. Now, there is a single arm which you are observing. Okay. So, and now you can also write this one in this form even this is acceptable. So, I which is equal to V by R and R. So, this is how this can be you know A and B can terminals can be taken out and can be represented in this way. Similarly, you know the A and B when it is taken out. So, uh, can be effectively represented in this. Now, in this form now this is the equivalent of this, this is the equivalent of this and what we have to always remember is when we transform the sources the arrowhead of the equivalent current source will coincide with the positive polarity of the equivalent voltage source. So, this is what we have to remember, this is what we have to remember and based on this uh, fact now we will uh, take up a problem related to uh, the source transformation which is actually flashed there you can observe. Now, uh, let us uh, you know uh, observe what is actually the question for the network shown below in uh, figure 9 this is the figure 9 find the current through 2 ohms resistor using source transformation technique. Now, 2 ohms resistance is here and uh, you know you need to find the current that flows through this 2 ohms resistance. Okay. Let me uh, draw the uh, circuit, let me draw the circuit. Okay, so, the circuit is something like this 5 amperes, then 3 ohms, then 4 ohms, then 7 ohms and then you have uh, 3 V x and then you have uh, 17 ohms and then you have uh, uh, 9 ohms, yeah sorry you have uh, a 2 ohm resistance across which there is the V x drop and then you have uh, uh, resistance of uh, 9 ohms and there is a current source of 1 ampere. I hope I have written the circuit correctly 5 amperes, 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 7 ohms and 17 ohms, 3 V x, 2 ohms and 9 ohms and 1 ampere. Yeah. Now, the objective is to find the current that flows through 2 ohms resistance and now this V x is the potential drop identified across this 2 ohms resistance on this voltage value the current source value depends on. Now, you know 3 V x you know this is the dependent current source how can you say that you are observing the arrowhead this is the dependent current source whose current value depends on depends on the voltage drop that takes place here. Okay. So, this can be regarded as voltage controlled current source. So, this is a dependent source and these two are the independent source. So, you can observe their values does not depend upon any voltage or current appearing in any uh, location of the network. Now, our objective as already told it is the finding to e, it is to find the current that flows through 2 ohms resistance. Now, you know this polarity of the potential drop has been already identified. So, now it is very clear that if you have a positive polarity here this should be the entry point of the current because this is a passive circuit element this is a passive circuit element so the i which we need to which we need to calculate should be going from left to right 
should be going from left to right. So, this is the i which we need to find out. Now, what is our what should be our idea now in order to find this i using source transformation techniques only. So, uh, until now we have only come across you know KVL okay, or KCL. So, we should be using that and of, of course, uh, after the source transformation and you know as already told the source transformation can be best used to reduce the network. So, what we will do we will reduce this network into a single loop network or the single closed path and we will apply what KVL to that closed path to find the value of i. Let us see. Now, you know this particular arrangement okay, is very much in accordance to what this arrangement okay. and, e and even this okay, is very much uh, in accordance to this. So, now this arrangement can be equivalently written into this form. So, that we will eliminate what two loops this one as well as this one. So, let us see how it can be done. So, this is i now. So, if I have to convert it this into what? the v okay so 5 3 is a 15 as already told the arrow head should coincide with the positive polarity so 15 volts now you have what uh, between these two you have what voltage source in series with a resistance yeah now you have after this you will have what 4 ohms and you know 7 ohms and uh, for the time being we will write this as it is 3 V x 17 ohms and then you know uh, uh, 2 ohms i let us maintain this plus minus V x and then this one you know between these two points this arrangement can be written as what voltage source in series with a resistance. So, 9 ohms so now these two points are these two points these two points. Now, 9 ohms and series with a voltage source arrowhead should be coinciding with the positive polarity. So, 1 9 is a 9 volts. So, now we have effectively eliminated this loop as well as this loop. Now, what we are observing that a voltage source is in series with what these two series resistances. So, these two series resistances can be regarded as what a single resistance whose value is equal to 7 ohms you know that. Now, between these two points I can replace this arrangement voltage source in series with a resistance okay, by a single current source in parallel with the 7 ohms resistance. Now, I will first draw those two points. So, now I will write this as what 7 ohms and the current value now we have current value is what voltage divided by the series resistance. So, 15 by 7 amperes 15 by 7 amperes okay. and now these two points are done now. So, next we have what 7 ohms okay. and now what we are observing here is you know a dependent current source in parallel with the resistance. Please remember the source transformation need not be always you know applicable to what the independent sources whatever we have considered for explanation it is equally applicable it is equally applicable for even the dependent sources be it the dependent current source or the dependent voltage source the source transformation it is equally applicable only the thing is if you transform the dependent current source it will get transformed to dependent voltage source that is all that is all right. So, now you have a parallel combination of what dependent current source and this 17 ohms resistance. So, what I can do between the same two points now this one this it is like you know this arrangement this arrangement uh, rotated right okay something like this okay now this arrangement can be now between the same two points i can represent what a single voltage source in series with the resistance so i can write voltage source dependent voltage source the arrow head should coincide with the positive polarity plus uh, plus minus then 17 3 is a 51 so 51 vx and then in series with in series with the 17 ohms okay now between these two points we have substituted effectively the voltage source in series with the resistance now, still you know the terminal voltage and current will not change. So, the I will remain as I even in this case. Now, 2 ohms the voltage drop of V x okay. then you have the good old 9 ohms and 9 volts. So, so 
this is the arrangement whatever we have got right now how can we reduce this network further 7 ohms parallel 7 ohms it is 3.5 ohms or 7 by 2 so then a single resistance single resistance of you know 3.5 ohms you know r parallel r is r by 2 so 7 by 2 is 3.5 ohms now between these two points between these two points what you are observing a current source of 15 by 7 amperes in parallel with 7 by 2 or 3.5 ohms between these two points the arrangement can be easily replaced by a single voltage source in series with a resistance of 3.5 ohms that we will be now seeing that we will be now seeing so i will write here so single voltage source voltage source value current into resistance so 15 by 7 into 7 by 2 single resistance right single resistance value 7 by 2 7 7 cancels 15 by 2 so 15 by 2 is what 7.5 volts so then coming to you know the series resistance of 3.5 ohms and then you have uh, minus plus 51 vx then you have uh, 17 ohms then we have 2 ohms with the identified potential drop to be something like this plus minus and then i and then you have uh, 9 ohms then you have uh, plus minus 9 volts and then uh, now what we observe is a single loop network and we can apply kvl to this particular loop or the network itself because the uh, network has got a, a single loop so kvl applied to the loop is now also what kvl applied to the network okay now uh, yeah uh, and can find this value of i let's see how it is done let's see how it is done now uh, you know let's make sure of the polarities of the potential drops here when the current goes in this direction so the drop across 9 ohms will have okay the positive polarity here and the negative polarity here and when the current goes in this direction comes in this way it will have the potential drop uh, positive polarities at the left it will see that the poten uh, poten uh, pos positive polarity of the potential drop to be left and negative polarity at the right okay because the current is going in this direction so this is the entry point so the entry point is always what the point of positive polarity of the potential drop that appears across passive circuit element this we have to remember forever right this is how it is now we are you know the same current i flows in this direction and will have or and will see the potential drop to be plus to minus left to right because this is the entry point now we are very much sure of the polarities of the potential drops across every element in this particular loop so we can easily apply we can easily apply kvl okay to this particular loop and can find the value of i let's see how it can be done so let's start from we are going clockwise okay we are going clockwise so we start from here so plus 3.5 you know before to that 3.5 i because you know how did i get this it is based on the fact that you know if there is a resistance if this is the current this is plus minus v and how all these uh, uh, parameters are related now so v is equal to ir this is from the ohms law you know okay so v this should be equal to i in times r so based on that fact or you can also regard it as what r times i okay this is based on that fact you know uh, v plus okay that's fine now the value of this so 3.5 you know this voltage plus is equal to what uh, i times r that is the current that enters the positive polarity into 3.5 or 3.5 i next coming to this minus it is already shown here minus 51 vx and then plus plus okay plus voltage drop what is the voltage drop supposing if i consider this as v uh, you have to consider the cu current that enters the positive polarity which is i into 17 so that is actually the drop here so i can write it as 17 times i then plus you have the option here plus vx you can write or this is the uh, potential drop which is identified here also there will be potential drop okay so but we wrote it in terms of uh, you know i so here also this vx can even be written as what without this you know if the positive polarity is here negative polarity is here this uh, i into 2 is actually vx so you can either write 2 times i or plus vx not a, not an issue but ultimately our objective is to find i so let us write in terms of i so plus you know plus because of by virtue of this positive polarity 9 times i you know and then plus 
plus you know you are come 9 and we are going in this way now minus 7.5 is equal to 0 and 7.5 is equal to 0. Now, our objective is what is to find i. Now, you have one equation, but two unknowns v x and i, but no problem because already we have seen that this v x is equal to what the current that enters the positive polarity into 2. So, v x will be replaced by you know 2 times i. Okay. So, we know that v x is equal to 2 times i. Okay. Then, substitute in above equation. So, what is that you are going to get now 3.5 i and then minus 51 into 2 i. So, 102 i then plus 17 i plus 2 i plus 9 i then plus 1.5 is equal to 0 9 minus 7.5 is 1.5. Now, you know let us you know add up all these 9 to 11 28 then this is 31.5 31.5 minus 102 minus 70.5 i. Okay, then this is equal to when this 1.5 goes to the right hand side minus 1.5. Okay, so now let me take this and uh, uh, bring it here. Okay, so then I can write it as what minus minus cancels 70.5 i is equal to 1.5, and this implies. Please remember. I am not writing equals to sign implies i is equal to 1.5 by 70.5. So, this will be ultimately I will rub this off now it is not required. So, then i is now equal to 0.021 amperes when we calculate 1.5 by 70.5 this is what that turns out to be. So, i is equal to 21.27 milli amperes milli amperes. So, now what we have done? We have used the source transformation and also the KVL Kirchhoff's voltage law to find the value of the required current which is the current which flows through 2 ohms resistance. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, this is that is what is shown here and now this is the uh, second problem which we are going to see represent the network shown in uh, figure in uh, figure below by a single voltage source in series with a resistance between the terminals A and B using the source transformation techniques. Now, uh, the whole idea here is to represent a single current source in parallel with a resistance in parallel with a resistance. Okay. And how do I get the single uh, uh, current source? So, I have to convert all these using the source transformation. Now, what you are observing in this arm, in this arm you are observing 5 volts and 20 volts, okay, 5 volts and 20 volts they are in series and series opposing, how can you say observe the line of contact, they have the similar signs. Okay. So, this tries to push the current in this direction, this tries to push the current in this direction. So, effectively it is 15 volts and always you know it takes higher voltage sign, the you can uh, represent these two by a single voltage source. Now, in the case of series opposing it will be the difference that is 15 volts and it will take the polarity same as the higher voltage source that is of uh, 20 volts right and now we can observe that okay 15 volts 4 ohms now going back uh, this 10 volts and 2 ohms bet in between these two points i can represent a single current source in parallel with 2 ohms what is single current source value 10 volts divided by 2 ohms so it is 5 amperes and directed down because the positive polarity is here okay so that is what you observe 5 amperes and 2 uh, ohms and next this 5 ampere uh, 5 amperes and 4 ohms needs no modification next uh, this 20 volts and 4 ohms can be easily replaced by between the same two points 20 divided by 4 5 amperes directed up in parallel with a resistance that is what is shown here now again this 15 volts 4 ohms between these two points can be written as 15 by 4 amperes in parallel with a resistance of 4 ohms 15 by 4 ohms is 3.75 amperes in parallel with a uh, resistance you know 3.75 amperes 4 ohms and all these you know multiple current sources can be easily represented by a single current source 5 amperes 5 amperes they are in the same direction can be added Min uh, minus 5 I mean it is in the uh, below direction so it's subtracted so 10 minus 5 is what 5 and the effective current source value is 5 and directed up okay because you know uh, the higher value is up okay is uh, directed up Okay, so, that is what you observe here 5 amperes effective value 
and you know all these resistances are in parallel to 4 ohms parallel 4 2 2 parallel 2 it is 1. So, that is what we observe 5 amperes and 1 ohms 3.75 amperes and 4 ohms you know when you add these two it will be 8.75 amperes and when I take the parallel combination 4 ohms with 1 ohms it is 0 0.8 when I take the source transformation it is 7 volts and 0 0.8 ohms in series. So, this effectively is now represented by a single voltage source in series with a resistance by using the source transformation techniques remaining things we will see in the next class.